The only question being determined by the Atomic Energy Commission is whether there is a possibility that Dr. Oppenheimer will intentionally or unintentionally reveal secret information to persons who should not have it. To me, this is what is meant within our security system by the term security risk. Character and associations are important only in so far as they bear on the possibility that secret information will be improperly revealed. In my opinion, the most important evidence in this regard is the fact that there is no indication in the entire record that Dr. Oppenheimer has ever divulged any secret information. The past 15 years of his life have been investigated and reinvestigated. It is clear that Dr. Oppenheimer's past associations and activities are not newly discovered in any substantial sense. They have been known for years to responsible authorities who have never been persuaded that they rendered Dr. Oppenheimer unfit for public service. Many of the country's outstanding men have expressed their faith in his integrity. In spite of all this, the majority of the Commission now concludes that Dr. Oppenheimer is a security risk. I cannot accept this conclusion, nor the fear behind it. In my opinion, the conclusion cannot be supported by a fair evaluation of the evidence. I conclude that Dr. Oppenheimer's employment will not endanger the common defense and security, and will be clearly consistent with the interests of the national security. I prefer the positive statement that Dr. Oppenheimer's further employment will continue to strengthen the United States. It is a source of real sadness to me that my last act as a public official should be participation in the determination of this matter, involving as it does an individual who has made a substantial contribution to the United States. This matter certainly reflects the difficult times in which we live. When I see such a combination of seriously disturbing actions and events as are present in regard to Dr. Oppenheimer, then I believe the risk to security passes acceptable bounds. All these actions and events and the relation between them make no other conclusion possible, in my opinion, than to deny clearance to Dr. Oppenheimer.
And to all my friends, thank you so much. I'm really having a terrific time. And you know, right now, I'd like to let you in on a kind of a personal secret, though. I want you all to meet the guy in my life. He's a big game hunter, a lecturer, an author. I'm real, real proud of him. His name is Wallace Tabor. But you know, Florence, we're real, real proud of you, too. I think I'm more proud than anyone in the television audience here tonight to, thrill, uh, to share all these thrills with you. I'm just sorry that I'm going to have to turn right around and run on off to Africa and let you go on up to Canada tomorrow. I'll send you a while. I'll let you know how I did this summer on my swims. You'll know you've got all the way around the world uh, applause because I'll be applauding for you way over there. How about a little kiss there now for you? Now he's wearing lipstick. <laughs> The need for vigilance is not past. Communism is still a menace everywhere. But the people of the United States and of the other American republics can feel that at least one grave danger has been averted. The United States pledges itself not merely to political opposition to communism, but to help to alleviate conditions in Guatemala and elsewhere which might afford communism an opportunity to spread its tentacles throughout this hemisphere. Thus we shall seek in positive ways to make our Americas an example which will inspire men everywhere. <laughs> 